is Andrew and I'm a haematology and general medicine uh, trainee who um, has now completed one and a half years of training. And this year was the first year I moved into full-time haematology training. And I wanted to share with you some thoughts on how to prepare to be a haematology registrar if you have just finished your basic physician training um, or moving from um, another training program into haematology and that's whether you're doing the pathology exams or not. So there's a few things that are just easy to do um, to set yourself up really well to hit the ground running from day one of your time as a haematology registrar. My number one recommendation is to register with the Australian Blood Authority and they have a particular thing called the Blood Portal through which you can ac access um, information and apply for certain blood product access. So in particular, the one that we use really commonly as a haematologist is um, Bloodstar, and Bloodstar is our intravenous immunoglobulin um, uh, application system, and um, it helps regulate the use of intravenous immunoglobulin as well as subcutaneous immunoglobulin um, across Australia. Uh, it's really easy to apply for access, and then the common things I use that for, which would be almost every week, would be applying for maintenance IVIG for patients with hypogamma globulinemia, which is really, really common. So transplant patients, myeloma patients, lymphoma patients, they're the main ones that we're dealing with. Uh, and then often as a registrar, you will need to help uh, do renewals as well as initial applications, not only for the patients you're directly involved in, but often for your um, consultant and registrar colleagues when they're away or busy. Um, so that's number one. And the number two one that I use really commonly within the um, Bloodstar is applying for uh, acute use of IVIG for um, immune thrombocytopenia purpura or ITP. That's something that you can use like 24 hours a day. You might end up doing an application in the middle of the night and then calling for immediate um, approval, or you might be doing it just routine during your day um, or for maintenance for certain, for certain patients as they're coming up for a certain procedure and need to have a boost in their platelets. Um, having that access is really important. It's really easy to apply. The second thing that is part of the National Blood Authority is um, the Australian Bleeding Disorders Registry, or ABDR. So those that have haemophilia, von Willebrand's disease, um, or um, more exotic, rarer types of bleeding disorder, which is mostly other factor deficiencies or platelet um, dysfunction conditions, they generally get registered on the ABDR, and there's a lot of um, haemophilia centres that have um, a specialist nurse or nurse practitioner like we do at the centre I work at, um, who help maintain all these documents. So when someone has that diagnosis made, or that's the first time that they've maybe entered the public system or the Australian system, it's really great to get their consent to put their details on um, that database. And that way, wherever they are in Australia, um, practitioners can access that data. So if someone were to be a mild haemophiliac, they don't usually use maintenance treatment, and they were to have a, a car accident whilst on a holiday and be unconscious, um, and the, they might arrive at a hospital and the hospital might be confused why their coags are off or why they're bleeding more than uh, usual, they can actually look up this person's details on that database at a moment's notice and find out uh, who the usual treating doctor is and, and what the details of the severity and diagnosis that they've got. Really helpful information, particularly for those who are working in the hemostasis area. So that's number one, get registered on the blood portal for Bloodstar and the ABDR access. Number two is um, requesting cell gene eye access uh, registration. So cell gene is the company that manages um, for myeloma patients the uh, prescription and production of the thalidomide uh, derivative. So thalidomide itself, um, famous for being a um, gestational hyperemesis uh, treatment back in like the 30s and 40s and then causing a lot of birth defects. And then it's the next generation stuff that we're really using a lot in myeloma therapy as standard today, which is lenalidomide and pomalidomide. Um, very important drugs to have access to, uh, particularly lenalidomide, which you use a lot in myeloma in Australia these days. So um, in order to really protect people from the issues that thalidomide had and, and really maximize safety, Celgene has this um, eye access website that as a practitioner and prescriber you can register for um, so that you can then get patients signed on with their details and consent them so, and educate them so they're aware of the potential side effects of these drugs. And it's only with that approval will the pharmacy be able to dispense the medication and only certain pharmacies are registered. So any, you can actually do a 
uh, you know, PBS application, and that's fine without this access, but until you actually registered with iAccess and had the patient consented on there, the pharmacy is unable to actually dispense the medication even with a, a valid script. So uh, do contact them and get signed up. It's a pretty easy thing to do um, and record your details. Number three, which is linked with that, is to register for PRODA and HPOS, HPOS access. Um, so the Health Practitioner Online uh, Portal, um, or HPOS or something like that, which is used with PRODA, which is an access program by the government, allow you to submit PBS applications online without having to call. But actually a lot of applications need to go to the Special um, Access uh, Pharmaceutical Benefits Scheme, which is based in Tasmania. So traditionally we used to mail that stuff and now you can actually submit it online in a secure format and that's through um, HPOS. So any practitioner can register for that, so you should do that as soon as possible. And it's the initial applications for lenalidomide, for daratumumab, for um, uh, blinatumumab, a lot of the newer medications that we're using um, in lymphoma, myeloma, and in the myeloid um, disorders, they are all needing initial application through um, the special PBS and so doing that in an efficient way means you can do the application um, and it usually might take you know 10-15 minutes scan it in and submit it online and you can often get uh, approval that same day if not the next day which is pretty typical so get registered for that. Preparing yourself for prescribing chemotherapy and intrathecal chemotherapy administration so eviq or evq.org.au uh, is a website by, uh, sponsored by the New South Wales uh, government and health department. It provides such a comprehensive um, resource for patients and practitioners um, having a prescri prescribing chemotherapy. It has all the details about the interactions and the information that'd be good. There's information sheets for patients. There's calculators so you can calculate the right kind of doses for your patients. I use it almost every day and it's such a great resource so get used to using that. Um, you can also, every uh, institution will have a different way of registering their um, registrars and consultants for uh, prescribing chemo in the public setting and also for giving intrathecal medications. But there is a really common video by um, the NHS that I'll put the link in the bottom to that you should watch as part of preparation for intrathecal. And um, there'll be some modules that you'll do uh, according to which institution you live in, uh, work in. But regardless of that, you should um, check out EverQ and uh, the intrathecal video. Um, I've also got some uh, reading recommendations and some other resources and I really want to credit my colleague Jo um, who uh, has given me a lot of these recommendations um, certainly when I started training um, and has given me this whole list so I'm going to put them out in terms of textbooks for those that are um, doing the pathology fellowship um, that are pretty rec uh, good recommendations. There's a number of apps that are really helpful so um, the Cell Atlas Cellivision the ISTH Academy, which is the International Society for Thrombosis and Hemostasis, and that has guidelines and lectures on there. The ASH, which is American Society of Hematology, pocket guidelines. Eye Transfuse by um, Lifeblood, formerly Red, uh, Red Cross, is a really great app for registrars. But actually, Eye Transfuse is really good for any practitioner, um, particularly working in a hospital setting, whether you're surgical or physician training or general training or an intern or a hematology consultant. It's really helpful, particularly for Warfarin reversal and um, uh, transfusion reactions. Really, really helpful. Um, it's also you should consider membership to for the Blood Academy, um, which uh, I've been told is the single most useful uh, membership for examination preparation. So I haven't done that because I'm not seeing the exams. But if you're thinking of that, do check that out. Um, there's a few websites I'm going to link in below, and there's a few. Uh, podcasts that are really great to listen to um, when you're driving to and from work or doing things at home. So there's a, a blood bank guy who particularly has transfusion related uh, podcasts. Um, blood, sweat and smears, uh, which is more on the pathology side. And then blood education, which is a really great one for, from some English uh, hematologists. And that really covers um, particularly clinical hematology but transfers into the pathology side as well. And I've personally listened to a number of those episodes and gleaned a lot of really good, useful insights from that. So if you're about to start uh, hematology training, or maybe you've already started and you're just looking for some extra resources, those are mine and my colleague Joe's recommendations, and I hope they're helpful. Good luck with your training and career.